Welcome back, Squirrel Nation. Today we're going to try a new video series that is focused on draft and banding. So what I did is I recorded my own draft and I will discuss my thought process going through the draft. So to begin, the bands are pretty standard. Um, I won't get into them that much. These are pretty common bands right now in Diamond Above. Um, my teammate decides to lock Vera. Okay, so I'm, I'm, this is already starting my thought process. I'm thinking to myself, Okay, uh, Vera, uh, basically an assassin, high burst, uh, good CC, um, definitely a weak on the tier list, let's say, so definitely not a strong hero, um, not optimal. Then what I'm looking at is I'm looking at my teammate and what they play. I see Lumbar Thane, so I see this Taglio probably plays a lot of support. Okay, then I'm looking down more, I'm looking at my S4, they play basically tanks and one mage, um, okay? <laughs> and then I see my last teammate is, we have a marksman, a tank, and Vera also mixed in there. So at this point, I'm kind of realizing that I'm most likely going to play a um, side laner because, yeah, basically I'm going to want to take a side laner because I would prefer the Slims to come out for the last pick as our jungler because that's a pretty high tier jungler, whereas uh, Terra to me is also not a great high tier um, side laner, and we already have a Vera. So that's what's going through my mind. Um, the reason you're thinking, of, you have to think about these things quick. Draft Band, you actually are under a time restraint, so you do have um, a, a, a clock on your decision process, so you need to use every bit of time to your advantage. So now I'm looking at Mina and Tolan. I'm waiting for my teammate to pick. Okay, my t teammate shows me and they just instant lock into Thane, which we saw they were probably going to play. Now S4 is also saying wants to play uh, Aram. So now I'm really kind of trying to piece together what my team comp is going to be. I'm looking right now at the enemy. They got Mina and Tolan who are both Mina's S tier for sure as a support. Tolan is at least A tier, I would say. And I basically got very poor mid and roaming support tier in Thane and Vera. So I'm kind of in at this point, I'm deciding like what what do I think is gonna happen in this game? And what I think is gonna happen is I think mid is gonna be lost. I think the roaming support is not gonna go great. So I'm looking for a hero. And once again, I, I, I'm pretty sure I need to end up in side lane here. Um, unless the uh, s player 5 tells me that he isn't going to jungle, then I'm going to assume he will jungle with Slims. So what I'm looking for is a side laner who is self-sufficient, who can dodge, like, for instance, Tolan's ultimate or Mina's taunts, right? Their team's going for that type of combo. So... I am kind of choosing between uh, Roxy or uh, Marja or Xenial, right? To me, those are comfortable side laners that I enjoy, and they also kind of fit in there. I, I opt not for Xenial because Xenial, they haven't, the enemy team hasn't picked their side laners, and Xenial can get really bullied early game by certain other side laners like Ryoma or ones that just have good damage. Um, and I feel my team's already going to lose lanes, so I really don't... So I know side lane has to be one. So that kind of leaves me with Roxy and Marja. And then I'm looking at the enemy team, and Marja is much better, is really good in a poke comp. Uh, Roxy can do well in a poke or kind of in a death ball because she just has good CC and everything like that, and she can stay on the lane. But anyways, I see two people want to play tanks, so if I would go Roxy, that's going to be another tank, so I opt for Marja instead. And this is just what I'm thinking. I mean, obviously my thoughts are going a lot quicker when this is happening. Um, to me, this was just the best thing I could do, because I was also thinking, like, what is our comp? Are we a death ball? Are we assassin comp? Are we a poke comp? But the problem was, with what I saw out of my team, I didn't see a... Um, a cohesive comp coming together and as you can see the enemy team went for an assassin comp right they're gonna have that Tolan and butterfly uh carry them early game get those cleanup kills mina's gonna try to group people together right mina i don't even think fits that well into their comp but their comp is still looking a lot better than ours at this point and i will pause here for the final 
So anyways, these are how the it ends up. Um, once the draft band is over for the like 30 seconds, I basically use that to think, and I'll just play it out. I use it to think about how am I going to play? What's my wing condition going into the game? So me going into the game, I'm looking at it. I'm not counting on my player one or player two. Valen and Zeph, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of counting on them. Uh, player five, I'm worried about because of the fact that we saw he wanted to play a marksman and we also knew he played slims and he wanted the fennec so he's probably more comfortable as a marksman but he basically got forced into zef because the uh player four decided to lock val so i my hope is either player four or player five is going to do well with me and hopefully we can have great uh mid and support but anyways uh it ends up good for me because as i said the marja i picked her because i wanted to win lane um, no matter who it is between, it's most likely going to be the Wonder Woman, but even if it's the Yorn, I'm very comfortable, uh, with either of those lanes. I think I can win those lanes and I'm going to be safe from Butterfly getting ganks. So anyways, to conclude, the end result of this was my team did lose, unsurprisingly, but we actually did hang in the game very well. My strategy did work. I ended up MVP. Um, I actually had the most gold out of anybody in the game and... The, the main things that happened to us is it just came down to comp. So the enemy team kept um, catching out our team rotating. So like our thing kept trying to act like he was in a death ball comp. Like he kept engaging and he was getting good engages if we would have had follow-up damage. But if you look at our comp, our comp is not really made for uh, huge group fights, right? We're, I guess, made for more picks, right? And the same thing with our Zephys is he ended up just diving in a lot and dying because, same thing, he he just wasn't playing a comfort character, and you can tell how the draft went that that was what was going to happen. But anyways, I kept us even in gold um, by really heavily pushing top, which forced Butterfly to come to my lane, but it just, yeah, it just ended up when team fighting happened around maybe 15 minutes into the game, they started to finally pull away in gold and just kind of snowball to the win from there. And it was just because our, our team just didn't have the right team fighting. Um, I know a lot of people feel really strongly about, uh, you know, your teammates did this or that. Obviously, in drafting and banning, once you guys get into Diamond, um, you're going to feel the same way. And it honestly demoralizes you going into the game because when your first two picks are like D-tier, F-tier heroes, I mean, it, it does... It does kind of hurt, but the thing that I really hope I get across in this video is you should still be trying to think about what your win condition is. How can you win, right? So I like to say plan for the worst, but hope for the best, right? So my thought process throughout this, I hope you realize, was I'm being realistic in what I expect out of the people. If they surprise me, awesome, and I'm just going to do my best to try to win. But anyways, I uh, hope you guys like this. If you did, please like and subscribe and leave any comments of things you wish I would cover more. Um, tell me anything that you enjoyed that I did cover or any type of thought process that you would like me to go more into. And anyways, I will catch you tomorrow. Take care.